So let's go ahead and discover our first information disclosure vulnerability or bug. Now, if you've done any of my other courses, you know that my approach is very, very practical and very hands-on. That means I'm going to be teaching you stuff as we do them by practice. And to do that, we're going to need websites to practice hacking and to practice discovering these bugs. This company offers a large number of vulnerable websites. These are websites that have bugs for you to practice hacking on legally and safely. And they're actually the same people that create a very useful tool that we will be using later on called Burp Suite. You might have already heard of it. So in order to use the websites or the labs that they created for us to practice hacking and learn bug hunting, you're going to have to create an account with them. Creating an account is very, very simple. All you have to do is go to portswigger.net, users register, put your email in here, click on register, and they will send you a password on your email. And then you will be using the email that you put in here and the password that you got on your email in order to log in. I'm not going to walk you through that because that is very, very simple. Once you have an account, you will need to log in. So we're going to be logging in using the login page. Again, portswigger.net forward slash users. You're going to put in the email that you signed up with. Paste the password. And I'm going to click on log in. Once you're logged in, you will be able to access all of the labs that they offer. Like I said, they have a large number of websites or labs that we can use to practice bug hunting or website hacking safely and legally. And these labs are very, very realistic and they're inspired by real life examples. Now, I would not recommend going through the labs right now because I'm going to walk you through a lot of them. And then I will tell you when you can go ahead and learn more about these things. From now onwards, see how I'm approaching these bugs and how I'm discovering them and then practice by doing the same exercises and trying to discover the same bugs that I'm showing you how to discover. And then at the end, I'm actually going to show you how I approach a bug hunt or a pen test, the methodology that I use, and you'll see how everything is going to click like puzzle pieces. So as mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about information disclosure vulnerabilities. And as you can see with each lab, it gives you the title. It gives you a description of what the goal is. Now, we will not always be following this goal. So I might actually be teaching you something else, but I'm still going to be using the lab environment because like I said, it mimics a real website. You can click on the access the lab to access the vulnerable website. We'll have a look at it in a minute. And at the bottom in here, you can actually see the solution. So again, in the future, if you're doing labs that I did not cover in the course, I will cover the main ones, the most realistic ones, in my opinion. You could actually just go on the solution and see how to solve this lab or this challenge. Now, the solution a lot of the time does not explain very well why you're doing this. And also you have a community solution, which is basically just someone going over the steps one by one. So again, it doesn't always explain it very, very well. But don't worry about that. I will give you all the basics and everything that you need to learn so that in the future, at the end of the course, if you go ahead and read solutions, you'll actually be able to understand what they're talking about. Now, this is a very, very simple lab right now. We're using it just to warm up and to practice. So obviously the solution here is very simple, but in the future, you'll see what I mean. So we're already logged in. I'm just going to refresh to update this page. And as you can see, I'm logged into my account and I can simply click on access lab, but I'm just going to open it in a new tab to load the vulnerable website that we will be practicing on. And as you can see, you get a normal website. This one looks like a shop website. You've got a number of products. If you click on a product, you will get the product information and you click on return. You go back to where you were. So it's a simple website, but it uses the exact same technologies used by real life websites. And this website is designed for you to practice hacking and and discover bugs within it. If you're able to discover bugs in here, if you're able to discover the bugs that I'm going to show you throughout this course, then you will be able to discover bugs in real websites. In this section, we're looking for information disclosure vulnerabilities. So anything, any glitch or any bug or anything that might leak or display information that the developers that created this website do not want you to see or do not want normal users to see. You can use tools to do that. And tools are actually better at doing this because this is a bit of a repetitive process. I don't like using tools and I will be showing you how to do everything manually throughout the course. But for this particular task, tools can be better. 
But I'm just gonna show you a real quick trick that you can do on most websites that will help you maybe find some secret paths. And then in the next lecture, I'll show you how to use a really useful tool to discover possibly hidden paths or sensitive data. The trick is to simply load the robots.txt file. So we're simply gonna go to whatever the website is, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna put a forward slash robots.txt. So this is a text file that a lot of websites include in their home directory. And the reason why they include it, because it tells search engines such as Google, Bing, and Yahoo, which paths they should avoid and should not index. Therefore, if you load it and if you actually get a file, so as you can see, we got some content in here. So basically this robots.txt file is telling Google and other search engines to not index whatever data that is included in the following path, in the backup path. So whatever user agent it is, star means everything, it's a wildcard. So it's saying whatever user agent it is, I want to disallow, I don't want you to load whatever that is stored in the backup path. So that could be interesting for us as hackers or bug hunters. So we're going to copy this and we're just going to simply load it in our URL bar. And as you can see now, you're getting a file in here. Now we don't know what's in the file, but it might be interesting. So let's click it. Let's see what's inside it. And once you load that file, you'll see that we have a lot of stuff that looks like code. So assuming you don't know what this is, you could see that this just simply looks like some code. And you can see that this code is in Java because you can see Java is being referred to it a number of times in here. So right now, this file, which is called product template.java.backup is leaking some source code. Now, in general, this is bad because users should not be able to see your source code. So even if this code did not contain anything sensitive, right now, this should be considered as an information disclosure. It's clearly not intended behavior. Therefore, it should be considered as a bug. Now, the code itself might contain some more sensitive information. Therefore, you should read it and see if it contains any usernames, any passwords, or anything that could make this bug or this discovery more impactful and hopefully get a bigger bounty or use it with another vulnerability or another bug that you will discover in order to elevate your privileges and just get something more out of it. So looking at the code, you can see in here, there is some kind of a connection trying to be established and if we read the data in the connection, this particularly this data right here, you can see that it is being sent to some kind of a domain and the domain is org.postgresql.driver. Now, if you don't know what PostgreSQL is, you can simply right click it and search on Google and you will learn that this is a type of a database engine. So now we know that there is some kind of a connection that is being made to a database engine. The type of this database is this one, PostgreSQL. It's being sent to localhost. We can see the port. We can see the username supposedly, and you can see the database name supposedly as well. So you might have to play with this a bit. And you can also see something that probably is a password. And it actually is a password in this particular example. Now, to be sure about these values, you can simply look up this method, the connection builder method on Google, and it'll explain to you how it works. But as you can see right now, simply from the values, we're able to deduce that right here, we have all the information needed to connect to the database of this application. Now, if you don't know what a database is, it's basically a structure that holds all of the data in a web application, such as usernames, passwords, credit card information, and all kinds of juicy stuff. So the fact that you discovered source code in here is actually an information disclosure bug, but it's even more dangerous and more serious because we're able to find database information in here and we can use this data possibly to connect to the database and get access to so much more information. And we managed to get all of that by simply looking at a very simple file that is called robots.txt.